One of the things that I absolutely love about Bamberg is, well, my site is called Wander in Germany for a reason, and this town is practically just made for wandering. <laughs> Bamberg, Germany, located in Franconia, which is in northern Bavaria. I'm going to take you around this gorgeous town, show you its Altstadt, show you some gardens, and show you why it is just a perfect, underrated, I wouldn't say hidden, but amazing gem to explore here in Bavaria. Let's go. just how beautiful, just how gorgeous Van Berg truly is. And yesterday I hit up most of the main tourist sites, but today what I want to do is get a little bit more off the beaten path, as cliche as that sounds, and see a little bit of a different side of Van Berg. By far one of my favorite towns in Germany. often considered the Franconian Rome for many different reasons. For example, they're both situated on seven hills and they both played really important roles in the Holy Roman Empire. Speaking of Italy, Bamberg also has its own little Venice, which is an absolute gem to take a gondola ride or even just a normal boat ride down to see the Fachwerk houses right up close, as well as enjoy the beautiful Baroque architecture of Bamberg. All right, so I just finished a Rauchbier, which is one of the most famous things in this town. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of history about Bamberg. So as you can see, it is gorgeous and beautiful no matter where you are in this town. You really can't go anywhere without being absolutely blown away by the beautiful sights, the beautiful architecture, and all the just amazing alleys and cobblestones and all that. One of the reasons why I love Bamberg so much is because the town dates back almost a thousand years ago. And unlike a lot of other German towns that got bound, bound, bombed, Bamberg actually was able to escape most of the bombing. Now that's not to say that there wasn't a couple of bombs, but for the most part, the entire town was pretty unscathed, which is one of the reasons why it is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Almost the entire town, rather than just like one or two sites in the town, because the whole thing is so old. What's really cool is that it actually used to be a Roman Empire seat, meaning the Roman Empire actually used to rule from here. And, and you really see a lot of that influence here in the town is specifically in the architecture and the buildings so in fact one of the rulers decided he loved the italian um, architecture so much that he wanted to kind of inspire some baroque architecture in the town so he started giving like basically tax deductions to anybody who would put on a facade of a baroque looking architecture so what's really cool is you have this facade culture all throughout town but then you also have these gorgeous Fachbeck house which is the half-tempered houses that everybody imagines when they envision Germany and what's really cool is you have this cool mixture of both of these all throughout town so on one street it's all baroque and beautiful and then the next it's Fachbeck house or the half-tempered houses and it's just a really cool vibe to walk through is that 
it's a relatively young town. And I don't mean the actual date of the town itself. I mean, that's like over a thousand years old. But what I do mean is that it's a university town. And what that does is it like instills this really great vibe of youthness and youngness in the town. And in fact, it is a random Wednesday today in June. And there's some awesome stuff going on in the Altstadt right now. And I'm gonna walk through there and show you some of it. And this is just a great example of what the cafe culture and the cobblestone streets are like here in Bamberg. It's just a great vibe to again, wander in Germany. So one of my favorite things about living in Germany is, of course, the local beers. And as I said earlier, Bamberg is one of the highest producing places in Germany for beer. There are over 70 breweries just in the Bamberg area alone. And so what I wanted to do was get a little bit off the beaten path from what most of the tourists go to, for the typical breweries and the typical beers. And I wanted to find a place where they started to make their own beer, very small scale, local, which is how I ended up in this hop garden. Yes, I am literally sitting in a garden where they grow and harvest their own hops for their own local beers. I'm at the Hopgarten Bamberg, and this place is gorgeous. It is a nursery, it is a garden, it is a hops garden. Uh, it's like a little bar. They've got a little kuchen which like with like cakes and things like that. And I think what I love most about this place is it's small scale, which means that the owner still has so much heart and soul into the business. He personally is the one that is growing the different plants that they put into the beers and he is personally the one that is testing out different recipes and what's there is a beer purity law here in Germany and you are only allowed to have three ingredients water malt and hops and that is it so if you make anything that is a little bit different you actually can't label it as beer but what's really cool is Chris here at the Hopfgarten is doing some really awesome experimenting with different flavors, different medicinal plants. And so what I'm drinking right now is a Himbeeren beer, which is a raspberry beer. And there is also things like chili beers and citronen beers, which don't get confused with a radle. And what they're doing here is just so cool if you are into craft brew or you know ingenuity or thinking outside the box especially when it comes to beer brewing they're doing some really cool stuff here something a little bit off the beaten path this is still right within Bamberg it took me less than 20 minutes to get to from my hotel you can hop on a bus to get you here you can just walk to get here but it's definitely outside the main tourist Altstadt but it's super easy to get to and a completely off the beaten path experience And you can see this wonderful view of the Mikkelsberg Monastery, the Dome, other church towers. I don't think a lot of tourists come here, especially if they're coming to Bamberg for just a day. And I think that's one of the things that makes this castle really cool is it's high up on the hill, so you've got great views and it's not completely packed with tourists. And so if you're looking for something a little bit different to do away from the crowds, definitely come out here and take a look around. This 
was a no stretch of the imagination all that I did in Bomberg. But if you're looking for that quintessential, beautiful, half-timbered village, cobblestone streets, experience of Germany, then you can definitely get it in Bomberg. And of course, if you want to know what else I recommend to do in Bomberg, just go to the blog. I actually have several articles, including my must-see things to do in Bomberg, as well as some more hidden gems and off-the-beaten path activities. And if you know me, you know I had to write an entire article on what to eat and where to eat it while in Bomberg. I've also got some great articles on some wonderful boutique hotels you can stay at, as well as a really detailed guide on exactly how to get to that Altenburg castle. Just head on over to wanderingermany.com to see everything that I have for you.